We all have seen the rise of small startups into massive global companies, but there are many startups out there which were wildly successful and popular in their time but ended up going bankrupt. Hey guys, I'm Jayesh and you're watching Hustlers TV. In this video we will see five popular and successful American startups that failed. At number 1, we have Theranos. Theranos was a health technology startup which claimed of having devised blood tests that require only small amounts of blood and could be performed very rapidly using small automated devices which the company called Edison Device. It was founded in 2003 by Elizabeth Holmes after dropping out of Stanford when she was 19 years old. The idea of Theranos was revolutionary and if executed perfectly, it could have changed the health industry forever. Hence it attracted big investors. Theranos raised more than $700 million from big venture capitalists and private investors like the Walton family, Rupert Murdoch, Mexican oil tycoon Carlos Slim and many others, resulting in a $10 billion valuation at its peak in 2013 and 14 and making its founder Elizabeth Holmes the youngest female billionaire. Theranos was busted after Wall Street Journal questioned that the blood testing machine they created largely didn't work and the company had been both faking its testing and using other commercial machines to complete the test it claimed were being done on its machine. One section of the complaint says Holmes falsely claimed in 2014 that the company had annual revenue of $100 million, thousand times than the actual figure of $100,000. The company tried to fight back against the charges but the evidence offered in the story was sufficiently convincing to all and on 14th of March 2018, Holmes and former company secretary Sunny Balwani were charged with massive fraud by the SEC. Today the company is shut and the founders are facing trial in court. At number 2, we have Juicero. Juicero was a San Francisco based startup known for its product, the Juicero Press, a Wi Fi connected juicer that could cold press packets of pre juiced fruits and vegetables, which the company sold exclusively to produce juice. The company was founded in 2013 by Doug Evans. From the start, Juicero was a ridiculous idea because first, you need to connect Juicer to the internet if you want to use it. So no internet means no juice. Second, you can only use their pre-juice packets to make juices and not fruits and vegetables. And third, it was priced at $6.99 which was very expensive. Even though the product had these massive shortcomings, it managed to raise more than $120 million in funding from prominent venture capital and investors like Cleaner Perkins, Caulfield & Byers, and even Alphabet, the parent company of Google. In 2017, Juicero was target of widespread criticism when Bloomberg News published a story suggesting that the company's produce packs could be squeezed by hands easily and effectively and that hand squeezing produced juice that was nearly indistinguishable in quantity and quality from the output of the company's expensive press device. The company defended its product and its process claiming that squeezing by hand created undue mess and promoted a poor user experience but this didn't help. And on 1st of September 2017, the company announced that it was suspending sales of their juicer and packets and was searching for a buyer for the company and its intellectual property. Bottom line is, Juicero was an overcomplicated product. At number 3, we have Doppler Labs. Doppler Labs was a San Francisco based audio technology company founded in 2013 by Noah Crafts and Fritz Landman with a mission to make computing more immersive and human. The company designed and manufactured in ear computing technology, including earplugs and wireless smart earbuds. In 2014, Doppler Labs launched their first product. Dubs Acoustic Filter, a high-tech earplug. It was fairly successful and got great reviews. With its success, the company managed to raise over $50 million in funding from the Chernin Group, Wildcat Capital Management and other VCs. In 2017, Doppler Labs launched their second and flagship product, the Year One, a pair of wireless smart earbuds that allows users to selectively filter ambient sound, stream music and amplify speech. It can be used to take phone calls and selectively filter certain sounds such as background noise. The product was good on paper and looked great physically as well, but there were serious engineering problems with it like it had only 2 hours of battery and faulty charging case. The company originally planned to make and sell a few hundred thousand models but managed to sell only 25,000 pieces. This failure put tremendous financial pressure on the already struggling business 
and left the company with not enough money to even retrade the product, get it manufactured and launch a better version second time. Hence on 1st of November 2017, Doppler Labs announced that the company would be winding down operation and officially closed on 1st of December. The company cited problems raising additional Series C funding as the reason for the company shutting down. Doppler Labs had a great product, but for a hardware company, they didn't have enough funding to learn from their unsuccessful product launch and make a better second version of the product, which most big companies like Apple, Microsoft, Google could do easily. At number 4, we have Jawbone. Jawbone was an American consumer technology and wearable products company headquartered in San Francisco, California. It developed and sold wearable technologies such as wristbands and portable audio devices, wireless speakers, Bluetooth headsets, and related technology. The company was founded by Alexander Asili and Hossein Rahman as Elif in March of 1998. In 2002, the company worked with DARPA, the US military's research arm, to research ways for combat soldiers to communicate with each other in difficult conditions. Using their military experience, later the company began to develop a mobile phone headset designed to suppress background noise and in 2006 launched their first version of Bluetooth headset called Jawbone. In 2008, 9 and 10, the company launched version 2, 3 and 4 of their Bluetooth headsets and each were fairly successful as the smartphone industry was booming. In 2010, Elif released its first non-headset product, the Jambox, a compact wireless Bluetooth speaker. By 2011, Jambox became one of the company's best-selling products. During the same time, big speaker manufacturers like JBL, Bose came up with their Bluetooth speakers which were as good as Jawbone but at half the price. Since Jawbone couldn't compete with them, they pivoted to wearable tech which was new and had small players like Fitbit and Pebble. In 2011, Jawbone launched its lifestyle tracking system UP. Initially, UP was successful, but later on, competitors were offering better features at the same price, some even less, and by 2015, Jawbone only had 2.8% of the fitness tracker market. In 2015, Jawbone sued Fitbit and a group of former employees who quit to join the rival company, alleging they stole trade secrets, business plans, market research, and other information. The same year, Apple launched its Apple Watch and took many struggling wearable tech players out of the business, and Jawbone was one of them. In July of 2017, Jawbone announced it would liquidate its asset. In this 19-year journey, Jawbone raised over $900 million from venture capital firms like Secure Capital, Anderson Horowitz, Kosla Ventures, Cleaner Perkins, as well as the Kuwait government's Sovereign Wealth Fund. As per CB Insights, Jawbone ranks as the second largest failure among venture-backed startups behind solar energy firm Solyndra, which went under in 2011. And at number 5, we have Solyndra. Solyndra was founded in Silicon Valley in 2004 as a renewable energy company that built CIGS thin film solar panels. While Solyndra's solar panels were more expensive to make, they were supposed to be cheaper to install and the skyrocketing price of polysilicon, a key ingredient in making traditional crystalline solar panels, gave the company a chance to compete in the market. Solyndra's solar panels were made of racks of cylindrical tubes as opposed to traditional flat panels. Solyndra's designers thought the cylindrical solar panels absorbed energy from any direction and the company claimed their panels were more efficient than any other panel in the market, but this claim was never proved. In December of 2006, Solyndra applied for government guaranteed loan under the Bush administration and in March of 2009, Energy Secretary Stephen Chu announced a $535 million conditional loan guarantee to Solyndra. During the same time, the price of polysilicon, which was expensive 5 years ago, dropped by about 89% and many Chinese firms flooded the American market with cheaper crystalline solar panels. The falling price of traditional solar panels put Solyndra's claim of cheaper installation in doubt and made their CIGS technology incapable of competing with them, thus resulting in Solyndra's demise despite raising quick capital. Management at the firm also made questionable spending decisions, wasting loan money on state-of-the-art equipment that went unused. On 31st of August 2011, Solyndra announced it was filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, laying off 1,100 employees and shutting down all operations and manufacturing. From the above examples of failed startups, we can conclude two things. First, 
Building a successful hardware startup is tough and it needs way more capital than software startups. And second is fake it till you make it attitude will give you pride and prosperity in the short run, but eventually you will fail. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. If you are new here, then please consider subscribing to our channel and do watch out our other videos. If you like this video, then you would definitely like our video on entrepreneurs who sold their startups for billions of dollars. The video would be on the screen right now. Go ahead and click it and watch it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.